Hey, kill you with truth. It's your boy, T-Mac, with my guy, Johnny Love. Like and subscribe and comment, and that really helps us out. And uh, Johnny, I, I'm a little sad. Uh, I, I got to admit, Johnny, I'm a little sad. And I'm a little teacup, but I'm a little sad, too. Short and stout and sad? Short. Stout. I'm trying to be less stout, but yes, stout. I've, I've just got to look in the mirror and and sad. <laughs> why yeah. are you why are you sad, D Mac? Well, because Johnny, that's the end of the NFL season for the Broncos. And as much as we like to dump on them and and criticize and hem and haw, I look forward to the games. I look I look forward to the games every Sunday. I do. I I find like like when little kids and Oldie movies, they go, mm. I, do a, mm, I love it. Oh, shucks. Oh, shucks. Mm. It's kind of like that, like little rascals. Oh, gee, Spanky. Oh, gee, Alfalfa. No, oh, Darla's on the f- Ferris wheel with buckwheat. Mm, I'm by myself. <laughs> little rascals. That's that. Boy, that is, that's going back. That's, that's a reference. That's, that's going back. That's for even, sure. Even the remake is pretty old at this point. All right. What's the question of the day then, Johnny? <laughs> Speaking of, if, if you're sad, sh- shouldn't we be happy about yesterday's result? Maybe? Yes, we should. I mean, the Broncos lost the Mega Bowl, which, you know, the trophy's 12 feet high. But yeah, yeah, we should be happy about it. And, you know, I am grudgingly happy about it. The Broncos now have the, 12th overall draft pick. Well, that's certainly better than 15 or 16. I think the Raiders are sitting there at 13. I mean, the Broncos and Raiders have the same record, you know, so they're both eight and nine. But there is a moment of just like, yeah, boy, you lost to the Raiders again, and you did. You've lost to the Raiders now eight straight times. So I guess that is Sean Payton's hump now. I guess you feel it now, coach. Listen, I think they did the right thing in terms of Russell Wilson and the, the ultimate decision. And and we saw that, you know, there was a little bit of fibbing going on there, Johnny, because down 27 to 7 or whatever the hell it was in the fourth quarter. What the hell was it? I don't know. 24. No, 24 to 7. They're down 24 to 7 going in the fourth quarter. Certainly, if it was about winning the game, you would have at that point put in Russell Wilson. You would have. I mean, you want to see what you got out of Jared Stidham, but to think Jared Stidham gave you a better shot in the fourth quarter coming back than a guy who's done it for a dozen years. I mean, come on. You know, I mean, you know. So... Not Gol- the- golly gee whiz. Golly gee, coach, I'm available, number three. I'm eligible. Wait, I don't think they have to do that on the sideline. They don't have to touch, you know, rub themselves down on the sideline. They just have to do that to referees, right? I'm eligible. Russ, um, Russ was spotted in his locker. Check this one out. Mike Cliss reporting. Russ was in his locker in full uniform more than 40 minutes after the game. You didn't play. Get changed to get on the bus. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what are you sitting around in your uniform for for 40 minutes? Gee, I'm sad. I I, I think that's a move that, that you want to talk about a look at me move. You know, I mean, 40 minutes in your full uniform after the game, Johnny, and you didn't play? I mean, Johnny, the uniform was clean. Pretty, pretty clean. I mean, you could have walked just on the bus in full uniform, I guess. You didn't stink or anything. <clears throat> Unless you had a very vigorous warm-up. I think Russ is looking for attention, and that's a wrap, man. We are never going to see Russell Wilson again. With the Broncos, aside from today, because today is clean out your locker day. That is no joke. That is literally what it's called. And at 10 o'clock today, the locker room is open for the muggles to get in there with the players having garbage bags, cleaning out their locker. 
Now, will Russ, I don't have the answer to this one. Do you think Russ will linger around long enough to take questions from reporters uh, today? What do you think? Mm. We'll see. <laughs> will, <laughs> will Russ be in full uniform today? Still in full uniform. Maybe. Listen, there's a little there's a little thing that's on the shelf right now. And if you catch it, we'll just do what's on the shelf at any second. So we won't wait till the end, but we'll do what's on the shelf at any second during there's, this morning's podcast. There there is a new banner but i see a couple of little cards oh, there oh, too. oh are you asking about one of the cards near the banner i am damn john go with that card what's right on the there. shelf this is a what's on the shelf this is an insta what's on the shelf boom 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 instant on us on the shelf all right you ready for this what does that say i want you to oh, read it oh wow sean payton sent you a little note i want you to read it for the folks on the uh Wishing you and your family happy holidays. Sean Payton, in the mail, sent me four quarts of ice cream. Really? Really. All right. Okay. Are you sure it's the Sean Payton? <laughs> I it's was also, not. Uh, also, the card is grammatically incorrect. But how, how is it in gra- grammatically there, incorrect? Well, there should be like a happy holidays or the comma. You know, something it should be in quotations, something along those lines. This is me giving you the eye. Uh, I'll take your word for it because I suck at grammar. But uh, and I know you that that old. Uh, you're you're the old ink, wretched ink stained journalist. I, I know that never, uh, never get in a battle with someone who buys uh, ink by the barrel, my friend. I tell you what. So Sean Payton is sending. I I wasn't the only one that got ice cream. The ice cream's up in the freezer, Johnny. But uh, thought it'd be inappropriate you, to eat the ice cream here. Well, no, you because someone test it. I'm, I exactly, <laughs> Johnny. I'm inviting you over later today. So I've got a quart of ice cream for you in the Reese's thing that is now hidden by the banner, but it's there for you as well. So um, I don't know. We'll run into each other at some point. Well, what do you think about Sean Payton? who is so tough on the media with so many different rules and everything like that. I'm I'm asking your opinion. What do you think about him? And apparently this was a a New Orleans thing. That At the end of the year, he would send uh, some of the muggles in New Orleans. And I was not the only muggle to receive this. I'm just the only one being loud about it. Um, What do you think about sending the muggles some ice cream at the end of the year? I'm I'm thinking that uh, you're not going to get it next year if you you tattle this year. Well, first of all, I do think it's a nice gesture. For sure. I do. I do think it's a nice gesture. Um, and I I do wonder how things will change overall. So I'm going to give Mr. Payton the benefit of the doubt. And if we want to start from scratch, that's fine. I just find some irony that in a very difficult year for the media with all the restrictions and all the sort of odd things that went hand in hand with Sean Payton in terms of what could be tweeted about and when it could be tweeted and what access we would have. And um, just, there's just a million little things that made the job, frankly, harder to do when all the job really was, was telling the fan base about the team that at the end of the whole thing, we got sent ice cream. Okay. I mean, thank you. That's nice. I mean, this has never happened before. I have never, ever gotten some sort of gift. And this is directly from the head coach, by the way. This is not the Broncos saying, hey, it's a Broncos tradition coach that we, you know, send ice cream to the muggles. Not at all. Um, Occasionally over the years, the Broncos PR staff would get at the holidays bottles of wine for the media that are there all the time. But I have never, ever, ever in 30 plus years gotten any kind of gift whatsoever at any point from a coach. Never. So thank you. First of all, thank you. That's really nice. Um, And 
Second of all, it's it's weird. <laughs> so it's nice and weird at the same time. I don't know if it's just something that, you know, he just does out of hand and it just doesn't matter. Or if this might be some sort of signal of change for how things are handled in the future. I'm not sure. But the level of paranoia and walking on eggshells and difficulty in people just doing their jobs, the up and down nature of very confrontational at press conferences, and other times being pretty open and pretty nice about things. We'll see. I think it was a learning experience for everybody this year about getting used to Sean Payton. And frankly, Sean Payton figuring out, wow, we ain't in Kansas anymore, nor are we in New Orleans. Things are just a little trickier out here. There's more media out here. There's jerkwads like me that will hold hold up your cards and point out these sort of things. So I do say thanks, honestly, genuinely. Um, I do think Sean Payton is a better coach than Nathaniel Hackett. I think the players on the Raiders played for their coach harder than they played for Sean Payton. I do think that too. And so there's there's a road to go down here where Sean Payton's got to get more of his players around him and really kind of start from this ground zero. But if your ground zero is eight wins, Johnny, in you know, this is the best the Broncos have done record-wise in years. And frankly, let's just take out that 17th game because that's relatively new. It's an eight and eight season. Well, they haven't been above 500 since going nine and seven with Gary Kubiak. This is the most wins they have had in a season, to be fair, since Gary Kubiak left the Broncos. Eight wins. And they got those eight wins in 16 games. Now, the bummer, of course, is they lost the uh the Mega Bowl, but you gain the 12th pick overall in the draft. So to be fair to Sean Payton, if you're going to do this job, you've got to be able to cook with your own ingredients. And he was handed a bag of groceries. And some of those groceries were stale and had spoiled and weren't in good shape. So I know the coach is part of the future more so than Russell Wilson, and I'm fine with that. I think Russ, at the end of the day, did everything he could to be in as good a shape as possible. So good for him. I think Russell Wilson prepared and executed the game plan the best that he could. It Johnny, Johnny, it just wasn't good enough. It wasn't. And it it was too frustrating that Sean Payton could not execute the things that he wanted to execute. So So I'm fine with it. Here's a big twist of irony. The Broncos internally voted for their own MVP was Patrick Sertan. Patrick Sertan was voted. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. The media, my bad. The media, not not internally, sorry. The media voted for the team MVP, and it was Patrick Sertan. Johnny, do you know how many interceptions Patrick Sertan had this year? Mm, A couple. One. There we go. He... He had two last year. The best player on your team, who's this shutdown corner and is so valuable, Johnny, and was thrown at, okay? Had three interceptions in two years. So, you know, maybe he knocks passes away and makes tackles, but it didn't stop quarterbacks from throwing at him. It didn't. Got thrown at all the time. And he had a chance to make a pretty spectacular interception. I mean, it's a it's an interception that Travis Hunter would make. And he dropped it early in that game. That could have made a difference in a pretty close game. I'm not anti-Patrick Sertan, although people have accused me of that. But I'm pointing out some realities. And at 12, who's got big Penix energy? Tonight, the national championship game between Washington and Michigan Features Michael Penix Jr. and J.J. McCarthy. McCarthy, I think, is a stretch in terms of quarterback that you could consider. And although he's part of the 6-6, really it's probably a big five. And when you talk about a big five, let's give a hand to big Penix energy. There's double entendre all over the place there. I don't want to even touch that. Well said. 
So where are we at? Yeah, we should be happy about the loss. Makes things better in the draft, but you still got to move up. And if that includes trading Patrick Sertan, which Chad Brown suggested last night on Nine News, I was so proud of Chad. So proud of him. Then you look so good there. On the, oh, on the I mean, he's like ridiculous. I mean, that is like they go from uh, Scotty Gange to Jacob Toby to, to, to Chad Brown to Tom Green to Kim Christensen. I, I don't know how they allow Mike Kliss on that set. Uh, I don't know, man. There's a lot of good looking people there. That's all I'm saying, Johnny. One of these things does not look like the other Cliss. I mean, you know. Let's he keep down. it real. He does. Yeah, I, fucks, I'd say friend. it to. I'd say it to his face. <laughs> Actually, Mike looks all right too. What am I saying? <laughs> yeah, why are you dogging up Mike? Uh, it's on. just my jealousy, obviously. Ooh, don't put me on TV. Actually, I am on TV sometimes, Johnny. I, I've seen you on TV. Usually, I'm jumping up and down with a sign behind somebody, but. Still. It's usually someone uh, someone like Tom Green uh, also on screen with you, so it's very distracting, maybe. That doesn't help. The firings have started in the NFL, and, and we should Ron Rivera out. We don't know why we're uh, doing this good old kill you a truth about Belichick quite yet. We should probably keep our eyes out. It could happen any second. But you got Arthur Smith. He got canned by Atlanta. He went out swinging. He was all pissed off about getting his ass kicked by Dennis Allen and the Saints. Grr, I'm upset with you. How dare you play football against me? It's the pros, dude. We're not getting ready for homecoming in high school. It's the pros. You're allowed to try to score as much as you want. Well, the, the clock, what do you want? The mercy rule? Should we have a running clock for you? I mean, give me a break. <laughs> You know, stop them. It's pro football. That is so weak, man. Yeah, they they may keep trying to score on you, dude. <sighs> the um, Raiders, if, if they don't hire Antonio Pierce, those players played hard for him. They went five and four with him to finish the season. Um, and the Panthers got to make a final decision on their coach. So there's one, two, three, four. There's five teams right there. And Belichick may make it uh one, two, three, four. There's four, sorry. And Belichick make my mate my, my Belichick might be five. I had a glitch. Did you hear that glitch? Me, uh, me, mur, mur, me. Mur. But hopefully no big changes with the Broncos. I'm serious about that. I don't want to see. Joe Lombardi or Kotwika or VJ. I don't want to see the coordinators go. Johnny, we need some damn consistency around here for the first time. And I, I really do hope that all the coordinators hang in there. I hope Sean Payton has the patience with them. I think we need to see about VJ. And yesterday we got reports by Tom Pelissero and by um, uh, Ian Rappaport that George Payton would be around to and I'm glad about that. I think that's a good thing. Not a bad thing. A good thing. The decision on Russ, I was digging into that yesterday with some uh, birdies behind the scenes. In all honesty, they got a lot of other things to figure out first. They don't have to make up a decision on Russ till March 17th. They can go that late. St. Patty's Day. And that's the fifth day of the new league year. Now, likely a decision on Russ will be made way before that. But the Broncos will, I mean, as bizarre as it might seem, they may tra try to trade Russ. That's not completely insane. I don't think it's going to work. But there's no reason they've got to do anything with them because either they trade him or they cut him. And if they cut him, most likely it'll be a post-June 1st designation to release him. So they got time. And I don't think many people are really going to be thinking about it. I, I, I think it's going to kind of play out over the next few weeks and, and decisions will have to be made on like Garrett Bowles and Josie Jewell and Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton, Justin Simmons and Patrick Sertan, all those type of things, but decisions on trades for guys that doesn't really have to happen until closer to the draft.
because it's more about draft position anyways. So any tradable commodity, you know, we'll see. The Broncos rolled the dice with making sure Russell Wilson didn't get hurt. So they survived that. He didn't get hurt. There's mo no more team activities. So phew, dodge that particular bullet. And so cutting Russ now would save them guaranteed money in 2025, which they certainly will do. They still will owe him $39 million for 2024, although that could be cut by $2 million if he signs a veteran minimum with another team. Isn't that exciting, Johnny, to have Russell Wilson um, save $2 million? It's like a deck oh, yeah. chair, deck chair on the Titanic. Yeah. But at least I got some ice cream from Sean Payton. <laughs> on maybe the coldest day of the new year. Brr. The Nuggets smoked the Pistons last night, and I got good news for you about the Pistons. Um, they're the they the the Nuggets are in Utah on Wednesday. Then they play in Denver on Friday. Johnny, the the Nuggets do not have a back to back until February. They are through the teeth, the hardest, hardest part, the harshest winter of their schedule is over. And they find themselves a half a game out of first place in the West. So as disappointing as that, if they had beat Orlando, which they should have, they were up 18 in that game, they would be a half game in first place. For the world champs to be getting their bearings going, to be healthy, Overall, to be really healthy and to have survived this really brutal schedule and look where they're at, get ready, Nuggets fans, for a run from your guys down there at Ball Arena. That's exciting and good to take care of business. Jokic had four points. He took three shots yesterday and had 16 assists while Jamal went for 37. Meanwhile, Michael Malone left Michael Porter Jr., the other MPJ here in town. They left him in the game a little bit later as he pointed out that he's not really in the game late or he doesn't get the ball late in many games. So we'll take everybody out. We'll leave you in and we'll see what happens. He had 18 last night. Listen, this team is in really good shape, really good shape. And again, like I said, it was a brutal, exhausting schedule. And now it's done. They survived it. And now you just got to finish out the season. They'll get the all-star break in there too. I mean, things are going to even out exhaustion-wise for the Nuggets. It's a good thing. The Avalanche, Johnny, they are a bit of a mystery. They are just three points behind the Winnipeg Jets, not only in the division, but also in the conference. So figure that out. But the problem is they've played a lot of games, and a lot of teams have games in hand. Johnny, do you know what a game in hand actually is? Um, I don't really want to answer that. I think we're going back publicly. to that big Penix, Penix energy again. But a game in hand means you've played more games than your opponent. And that's the case with the Avs. They've played a lot of games too. So, for example, 53 points, they trailed the big bad Bruins who come to town tonight, 54. But the Bruins have a game in hand to the Avalanche. Am I going too fast here? I'll slow down. <laughs> but tonight, the Bruins um, are here in town. And then you've got the Golden Knights uh, on Wednesday. And that's another team that they're battling with. And you just don't know what this abs. And in a, a game where they played Ivan Prozvitov and had to pull him after giving, I think he gave up like four goals on two shots. That's not easy to do. And they didn't want to play Georgiev. He had played nine straight games. Get ready for 10. Go in, Georgie. And the reason why Bednar did that the other night against the Panthers was because he thought the team had fought hard to come back and deserved a chance to win the game. But Georgie lit up two goals on his own, and then they allowed two empty netters, and bada-bing, bada-boom, that's how you lose the game. But that being said, you got a goalie issue, Johnny. You got a goalie issue, and Bednar did admit that when I asked him about, you know, what you're going to do there with uh, your backup goaltender when you play him and he stinks. You know, his answer was, we'll see. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Johnny. When somebody says they ask you about your job and said, uh, hey, that Johnny, you know, how's he doing there? Mm, we'll see. We'll see. 
<laughs> Didn't get me any ice cream this year. We'll see. I got a, I got a, we'll see uh, earlier this year. In a place that I was at for a long time. Maybe you should have gotten some more ice cream. That would have been a good idea. Johnny, we already did what's on the shelf. I wonder if we just want to do things I hate. You know, we don't have a what's on the shelf. Usually that, maybe I should have saved this. Uh, but then I wouldn't have had a theme. What good am I without a theme? I really do love my themes. You are, uh, you know, you you do love a good theme. I do love a good theme. I'm a big theme guy. That's why I love Vegas. There's themes all over the place. Do you love uh, Elitches? That's a theme park. You know, Johnny, what is the theme of Elitches? Fun. <laughs> I always wondered uh, about carny rides that would pull up in shopping center malls. You know, the, the 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 rides that are in a permanent location, not as worried about, but those uh you want to get on the loop de loop roller coaster that you know some toothless guy that ran away from home when he was 15 set up. You know, I'll pass. It's a it's like a scene of Joe Dirt. Uh when Joe Dirt is setting up the carnival gear, uh, I think it's time to, you know, leave. Uh, Johnny, if there's nothing you hate, we can wrap this sucker up with a, a word of inspiration. Mm. Oh, is there uh, something you hate? Is there anything you hate? Things I hate? You know, I, I'm feeling hate. particularly happy today, so I don't know. There's nothing, nothing to hate. So, Of all the... By the way, let, let me tell you something I hate. The Bear got awarded for a Golden Globe for a comedy series? Have you seen The Bear? The Bear is great. But it's, it's not a comedy. Not a comedy. <laughs> I mean, listen, I thought the Bears' first season was great. Agreed. I was very excited for season two. And then season two was about building a restaurant. The entire season. Like, I, I, I was into, like, the cooking and chef, 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 chef. Yes, chef, chef. I don't know. I like all the cooking stuff. The entire season was about construction uh, where's the cooking it's not called the beef it's called the bear <sighs> the beef was a really good movie did you see beef beef just beef it's called beef it's from, that, was uh, a, that was a that was a show it wasn't a movie no beef with was, ali wong yeah that was that was yeah oh that yeah, was yeah, yeah that, was, show. that was a limited series correct sorry sorry you're right limited series that was good that was that was weird as hell. The, Beef it, was one weird ass uh, limited series. It was uh, it was Ali Wong and uh, Glenn from The Walking Dead. There you which go. Which I can't remember his name. Yeah, I never watched the show, so I don't care. But that uh, one, but 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 the but the bear is not a comedy. Succession to me, I did watch it. I watched every episode. I know it like the back of my hand. And it's one of those shows that I just kept watching because uh, I was too deep into it. You know, it was like Game of Thrones. Like, oh, my God, I got I guess I got to finish watching this crap. It's kind of like Mad Men in that sense. Mad Men got like that a little bit. But the ending of Mad Men was really good. Really, really good. One of the best TV uh, series finales of all time. Of all time. The best series finale of all time might be MASH. Um, another one that was incredible was the season finale of Six Feet Under. And I would put the season finale of Mad Men right up there with them. But other than that, I see where you're going there. Cheers? I remember Cheers. Oh, I, I have finale. no recollection of of how Cheers ended. Did the, did the blonde woman come back as a crack whore because she made a bad decision to leave the show in the first place <laughs> she does come back i think in that episode but um no it's like at the end it's sam malone turning off the lights at cheers it's it's pretty iconic oh yeah now that you mention it diane did not come back as a crack whore diane was just fine all right christy alley put on some weight though but hey hey who hasn't thanks coach that's the end of the podcast Thanks, Coach.